today is uh, um, March 25th, um, 2020. And uh, I think because of the coronavirus, everyone's at home and uh, staying safe. Um, I just thought of uh, sharing a video and a story um, of uh, what has recently happened in my life. Yesterday was supposed to be um, the most memorable moment in my life. Um, and I thought of uh, sharing a story of why it won't be anymore. This story is uh, somehow hard for me to share. Um, a part of me is saying not to share it um, because it's too personal. Um, but the other part of, uh, of me is saying otherwise because um, this is an opportunity to share um, how, that God is truly faithful to us. Over the past two years, I have been posting uh, videos on YouTube. Um, videos of uh, from a foreigner's perspective living in Japan. Um, I have posted videos of me and my nephew playing around uh, my bike from school to home and my dad visiting to Japan. And I must say that I have truly enjoyed it. Um, I have learned a lot and I still do. Um, the reason I enjoy it is because I I, I like the, the process of creating a video and telling a narrative. Part of those video was my recent engagement. Um, I met an amazing woman and uh, we were long distance dating at the time. Um, she decided to finally come to Japan and see me. As she was about to visit me, um, I was telling myself that why would a person like her visit me? Um, and I must say that she really took the courage and uh, took a, le a leap of faith. Um, part of me was also saying that as a man, I should be the one to visit her first in her country. Um, things went well with our relationship. And weeks after her return uh, from Japan, she decided to um, come to Japan, live here, and uh, become an English teacher. I told myself that I really want to marry her, but I didn't have money so uh, um, at that time, and uh, I was trying to make ends meet. So what I did is uh, I took uh, two part-time jobs, and I also asked my mother to help me for support uh, for me to be able to buy an engagement ring. And I did. I was able to buy one. Um, after I had bought the ring, I kept the ring to myself and I kept it um, for her not to uh, see it and uh, waited for the right timing uh, to pop the question. Summer vacation um, was nearing at the time um, and we decided to buy tickets and go to America to visit her, her parents. Um, I was a little ambivalent at the time because I've never had uh, the meeting the parents experience, but I held my horses for a bit because I realized that I didn't have uh, a visa at the time um, and I have to apply for it and pay for it and it was really expensive. I think it's about $150 just to apply for an American visa, for a tourist visa. Um, so what I did is, is I took another part-time job and with her help I, I was able to gather all the documents, went to Tokyo, submitted my documents. Um, after a week I got my visa approved, um, packed our bags and we were set for an adventure. On the day of our um, arrival uh, in America, um, her parents picked us up at the airport um, and I was so excited to finally uh, shake uh, her uh, father's hands and uh, hug her mother. Um, I had the ring in my bag uh, during the course of the trip. Um, I had been keeping it to myself. Um, I was so excited but deep inside my heart I was telling myself that I have to do this right. Um, right in a sense that I have to um, properly ask her her parents uh, for her hand before asking her to marry me. As we were driving, we went to this uh, food chain called Sonic. Um, we went to a drive through and uh, um, took our, our or ordered our, our food. We checked our orders and my, ba my burger wasn't there. Um, so what my girlfriend did is she went back inside, checked on my order. And so it was me, um, uh, her parents in the car that moment. So um, what I did is I took the opportunity, grabbed the ring in my bag and showed it to her parents um, and I told her that I'd like to uh, marry um, their daughter and uh, the rest was history. <clears throat> mm. 
Um, weeks after our return uh, to Japan and our engagement, um, something happened. We had an argument. <clears throat> During our argument, um, my emotions were high and uh, I said things I still regret um, to this day. And uh, um, I can truly attest uh, the, the phrase saying, hold your tongue when your emotions are high, um, because that rings true to me uh, right now. Um, I saw a quote on Facebook um, this past few days uh, saying, not every argument needs uh, our reaction. Sometimes choose to lose to win time, relation, and the person because these three are more important than winning an argument. I apologized to her to um, what I had said, uh, but she was already decided to leave and uh, go back to America. So she gave the ring back to me. Mm. Um, I was shattered when she left uh, and I went through uh, serious depression. Um, I also went through financial, physical, um, and emotional struggles. My relationship with my nephew had become really unhealthy and uh, I lost all motivation to do the things I enjoy doing. As I was struggling, I reached out to uh, my pastor and uh, he shared to me um, uh, sermons of Tim Keller. And in one of those sermons, uh, Tim Keller said that we are three dimensions as humans. We are physical and we need food. We are emotional and we need community. And we are spiritual and we need truth. Tim Keller also shared uh, Job's life when uh, he was struggling with lost, lost of uh, his fortune, family, and health. After Job's prayer, God said, he honored me. Keller said, what in the world was God thinking after all these prayers, blunt and honest prayers to him? Still, God said, Job honored him. And uh, in contrary, uh, Keller said, because they were prayers. Um, instead of Job turning his back away from God, he faced God and expressed his raw and true emotions to him. And uh, Keller said that that is a sign of faith. Uh, in God and that is honoring to him it has somehow um, made me realize that I have to stop all pretensions uh, when I pray to God um, this is just my own personal experience when I whenever I pray to God I would tell myself that I have to say this um, beautiful and uh, um, words of thanksgiving and praise um, I however I'm not saying that those are wrong things if our heart is truly saying and expressing these words to him, we ought not to hinder ourselves, but we should um, say them as, as honest as, I, as we can. But at times I feel like um, I, I was trying to um, be as a good son as I can be whenever I face God. And um, I must say that going through this ordeal, it has taught me to just be honest to him. And we can come boldly. Uh, uh, to the throne of grace and we can pour out our hearts to him um, my pastor told me that um, it's okay Caesar it's okay to um, say these prayers pour out your spirit to God um, in your hands commit I commit my spirit Jesus said like I said this ordeal has taught me to just stop all pretension just pray to him and just uh, um, just be honest in your in your prayers I guess the people around me have been uh, really encouraging. Um, sometimes my I would feel that I'm I'm okay, and sometimes I would feel down again. My my emotions would fluctuate, and even to the point that sometimes when my emotions were really down, um, I would think of dark thoughts, um, thoughts of like not wanting to continue with life anymore, um, and that's true. And uh, one of my friend reached out and called. Um, I've shared these thoughts to him. He said, like, uh, Caesar, don't do something silly. Those words were, it's funny because those words were simple, yet it was somehow like a snap of a finger that awakens me and tell, tells me that Caesar, life still goes on. Another friend of mine um, who has had also gone through the same exact um, 
circumstance circumstance that I uh, as I do right now um, sent me a message she said what you're feeling is valid when you don't know what the future holds in the deepest desires of your heart burn with so much uncertainty you already know be content in the Lord his ways are higher and so on it is okay to feel despair it is okay to hurt God doesn't call us to be happy all the time but to have joy and faith in him don't give up on the Lord he hasn't given up on you your story isn't over there is a new chapter unfolding Um, weeks later, um, I started to feel hopeful again in life. I started to do things I love to do, um, making videos and doing photography. Um, and uh, I got a call, a call from the uh, jewelry shop telling me that uh, the ring has already been made and they are ready for pickup. I started to feel bad again and told myself that those rings are meaningless anymore because I won't be able to use them for a wedding. Uh, three days later, I went there, put a smile on my face, went back to my car, took the ring again, looked at the ring in my hand for the good, for a good three minutes, took a deep breath and uh, sighed. I started to went back to my um, depressed state again and um, contemplate on the things that I should have done. A friend of mine told me that I have to. Um, also forgive myself and above all find forgiveness in Christ daily um, my sister on the other hand uh, if you could only see my relationship with my sister we're not your typical um, brother and sister relationship we are somehow cold to each other um, but I know that she loves me and I love her too and at the time when I had called her when my ex fiance left Caesar don't stay at your home uh, come here sleep with your nephew play with him what do you want me to do for you? Do you want me to cook for you? And she was always there for me. These people that um, I didn't take notice of uh, just kept on accepting me and loving me unconditionally. And I just realized that this is a true testament to how they have also experienced uh, God's unconditional love in their lives. I realized that the people that I didn't, that I have not been taking notice of during my uh, sunny days were there to help and offer their umbrella on my rainy days. Um, I felt like my pride was being crushed um, to the ground. A very close friend of mine also um, shared to me of a devotion that he was reading at the time. It was uh, a devotion of Jesus after his uh, baptism and being filled with the Holy Spirit at once was taken to uh, a desert. Yet after that he was taken at once to a desert. Aren't your times of deepest depression the moments that immediately follow your loftiest high? Just yesterday, you were soaring high in the heavens and singing in the radiance of the morning. Today, however, your wings are folded and your song is silent. At noon, you were basking in the sunshine of the Father's smile, but by evening, you were saying from the wilderness, My way is hidden from the Lord. No, my soul, the actual suddenness of the change is proof that it is not abnormal. Have you considered the comfort of the words at once and why the change comes so soon after the blessing? Simply to show that it is the sequel to the blessing. God shines his light on you to make you fit for life's desert, Gethsemanes and Calvaries. He lifts you to new heights to strengthen you so that you may go deeper still. He illuminates you so he may send you into the night, making you a help to the helpless. You are not always worthy of the wilderness. You are only worthy of the wilderness after the splendor of the Jordan River. Nothing but the sun's vision can equip you to carry the Spirit's burden, and the only glory of baptism can withstand the hunger of the desert. George Matheson My best friend who sent me the, the devotional quote, Caesar, because you um, like photography, why don't you, um, you know, take pictures of someone, take their portraits and share their story? Um, he shared there's this one guy named Brandon Stanton and he has a photo blog called um, uh, Humans of New York. What he would do is he would um, walk in the streets of New York and take portraits of people and share their stories online, um, of course with their permission. My best friend told me that 
Caesar, maybe you could do that from a, from a Christian perspective. And I have been doing that. And uh, I made a Facebook page on Facebook called The Pilgrim Story. And uh, one of the things that um, somehow motivates me to do that is to also um, understand that people in different walks of life do also experience raw and painful, painful life struggles. Still, life goes on for them. It somehow helps me to continue on with life as well. Um, and also understand where their hope is coming from, um, especially from a Christian perspective. By sharing them online, of course, with their permission as well, can also shed light to those who are going through this, the same struggles as well. Actually, recently, uh, a good mentor of mine uh, found out that he has cancer, and he said that Caesar. Um, to be honest, there have been tears, but also there have been trust as well. And whenever I observe him, uh, he still has this joy of doing the things that uh, he would normally do in the church um, and still uplifts uh, the, the weak. And I was thinking that his ordeal is nowhere near to mine. Mine is like this and his is like um, this. I wanted, to end this. I wanted to end this video by um, saying that my ex-fiance is not a bad person. She, she is an amazing person. Um, she may have left, but I have also uh, left wounds um, on her heart, caused her to her family, my family, and myself too as well. I am still in the process of uh, learning to live life um, without her and uh, picking up those, uh, um, I guess, those small shattered pieces in my life. I also have to um, learn how to forgive. I've heard once that um, unforgiveness eats us up from the inside. Um, I guess I also have to be careful to um, let pride um, and anger to be my resting place and comfort. I have to be careful to um, to be able to finally tell, tell myself that um, I have already moved on. I guess um, we can truly forgive in, in light of God's forgiveness through Christ and what He has done on the cross. Um, who died for our sins on our behalf and was truly abandoned for us and that when we go through um, struggles um, and feel abandoned like what Keller said we would only feel abandoned because Christ was truly abandoned for us. Mm -hmm.